In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate soft tissue technique applied to the thoracic spine. I'm going to be pushing on a couple areas of your back. Uh, first, looking for areas of tenderness or any areas that we need to treat. And then I'm going to be applying some pressure, pushing to the side, pushing top to bottom. And um, you let me know if there's anything that's tender, uncomfortable, or if you need me to stop, okay? okay. All right. So now I'd like you to lay face down. Okay. And now I'm going to assess the paraspinal tissues. So I'm going to be assessing for any evidence of somatic dysfunction, any tissue texture changes, muscle hypertonicity, any asymmetry of that hypertonicity from one side to the other. I'm also going to be assessing for any uh, motion restrictions, so any local tissue motion restrictions, or any gross or segmental uh, motion restrictions that I might find. I'm also going to be appreciating any areas of tenderness or any areas of sensitivity. And what I'm finding is a little bit of hypertonicity in this upper thoracic region on the right and also in this lower uh, thoracolumbar region on this right side as well. And is there any tenderness here? Yeah, at the top. At the top. So here in this area, there's some tenderness. Any tenderness down here in the bottom? No, not really. Not as much. Okay. So for our first example, we're going to use unilateral prone pressure or perpendicular stretching. We're going to start by identifying our landmarks, our spinous processes, and uh, we're going to place our thenar eminences just lateral to the spinous processes, hooking on the medial aspect of those paraspinal tissues with our thumb pointing up towards the head. Then we're going to use our other hand and provide uh, additional pressure on top of that thumb, adding a little bit of support. The rest of our fingers are going to be relatively soft and relaxed, and we're going to be applying uh, pressure anteriorly and then laterally, adding a little bit of a perpendicular stretch relative to uh, the paraspinal tissues. So we can press and hold until we feel signs of tissue release, or we can apply our pressure in more of a rhythmic kneading and stretching fashion, focusing our attention on any areas that are particularly uh, restricted. Now in each of these uh, motions we want to make sure that we are uh, contacting the muscle layer and then pushing that muscle laterally without without rolling on top of the muscle too much. Okay and then we're going to move down to this uh, thoracolumbar area and this area feels a little stubborn in particular so I'm going to apply a little bit of sustained pressure laterally. Good, and I feel a little bit of release here. So once I'm done, I can return my patient back to neutral position and reassess for somatic dysfunction. So now just feeling for any evidence of somatic dysfunction, that muscle hypertonicity and tension does feel a little bit better, not fully resolved. The next example is bilateral prone pressure or longitudinal stretching. So again, we're gonna be focusing on this right side and we're gonna be placing the heel of our hand along the paraspinals, lateral to the spinous processes. And then we're gonna take our other hand on the opposite side, lateral to the spinous processes, and we're gonna be applying pressure anteriorly and then superiorly and inferiorly on each side in opposite directions. Now again, we can apply this in a more rhythmic, longitudinal stretching fashion, or we can apply an anterior and superior and inferior force and sustain it until we feel tissue release. Now, if you find a particular area that might be a little bit stubborn, we could also, instead of applying pressure on opposite sides of the spinous processes, we could apply pressure on the same sides. So we're going to switch our pressure to the heel of our hand and hypothenar eminence on our cephalad hand and our hypothenar eminence on our caudate hand. We're going to apply pressure anteriorly and then push in opposite directions, longitudinally stretching those tissues and we're gonna move along the spine towards any area where we feel our restriction. After we've treated sufficiently, we can return our patient back to neutral and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. Now that right side does feel significantly better, and there is a little bit of uh, still some soft tissue tension on this left side that's just medial to the scapula. So for our next example, we're gonna be treating the upper thoracics using a shoulder block. So if you can uh, line your right side, 
In this example, we're going to position our patient in a lateral recumbent position. And our focus is going to be on the upper thoracic soft tissues just medial to the scapula. Now to help the scapula move out of the way and also stretch those tissues, we're going to take the ipsilateral hand and place it on our shoulder. Then we're going to take our fingertips, the tips and pads of our fingers, and we're going to apply pressure just lateral to the spinous processes. We're going to apply anterior pressure, hooking just medial to those tissues, and then we're going to drag laterally applying a perpendicular stretch to those paraspinal tissues. Now at the same time we can lean back using our uh, body weight as leverage and we can shift our attention to any area along that paraspinal area and along the medial scapular border uh, where we feel additional tension. And this can be done again in an intermittent uh, kneading stretching fashion or it can be done as a more sustained pressure. If for any reason our patient's shoulder is uncomfortable in this position or uh, we don't feel as stable, we can also put our patient's hand uh, on our forearm and then do the same thing. Same pressures. Change our angle as needed. And this area right here, medial to the uh, upper scapula is a little bit more hypertonic, so I want to apply a little bit more of a sustained pressure. And then I feel that tissue release. I can return my patient back to a neutral position, and then I can reassess for somatic dysfunction.